five tips on how to use your big green egg properly. That's right, welcome back to another week of The Fogo Life. This week, we're gonna do something a little different for you. We're skipping some cooking, and we're gonna go into the five basic fundamentals that I like to use and share on the big green egg. We get asked a lot about temperature control, how to set up the egg. We're gonna cover some of these things right down to how you clean it out the right way. But before we get started, do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, and give us a thumbs up. We love to hear from you. One of the most burning questions haha, that I get about charcoal is, what are the different charcoals for? and how much do I use? Well, we basically make two different types of charcoal. We have our super premium and our premium, low and slow, kind of more for grilling here. So I'm gonna show you exactly how much to use for each one and how to light it and everything that you need to know about it. Now let's open one of these bags. I'm getting a little older. Instead of using that big old 35 pound bag, I'm gonna use our other 17.6 pound bag. It's just a little easier to handle. Yeah, the old amount of charcoal question. I get asked it quite a bit, and really for me, there's only one answer. You can have too little, you can't have too much. So I'm gonna show you where I fill mine to. I want you to understand something, folks. What I'm doing here is subjective. There's many different ways to do it. I like to use as much charcoal as I can in my grill because first of all, it's gonna be left for next time, and I can just use it all. I don't wanna run out of fuel while I'm cooking. We're starting with a nice cleaned out egg. We got the big green egg charcoal basket in here. We've got our fire bowl and our fire ring. Those are the three basic components to the inside of a big green egg. One of the most common misconceptions is to not use enough charcoal. Again, many different schools of thought on this, but this is how I do it and most of the people that I know that are big into big green eggs, how they do it as well. So a lot of people just wanna fill it to here and they think that that's enough and just put a base layer down on the bottom. Not me. I want to fill it to about here. I want it to be just below where the deflector is going to sit so that it's full of charcoal so I don't run out of charcoal while I'm cooking. A lot of people only want to fill their charcoal basket up to there. They feel that that's plenty, got a nice bed of coals, it's going to treat you well. Well, if you're doing something that's going to take more than a couple of hours, guess what? You're going to run out, you're going to have to take the whole thing apart and add more charcoal. That may look like a lot of charcoal to some people, but don't forget, this thing is a lean, green cooking machine. Once you're done cooking, you shut it down, it puts the coals out in minutes. I'm gonna show you how to do that, but first, let me show you how to light the charcoal for the different ways that we can cook on a Kamado-style cooker. I am not a big gimmick guy, but when it comes to lighting your charcoal, there's no replacing this. It's called the Blazer Ball. It's available on our website. This is a nice, bright and shiny new one. I'm gonna use this one because you can reuse it time and time again for lighting your charcoal. Let me show you how to do it. So basically there's two different types of use for a Kamado grill like this, smoking and grilling. I'm gonna show you how to light the charcoal for each one. We're gonna start with smoking where I like to light the fire at the bottom so that the air is coming into the egg and getting directly to the fire, feeding it right from the source. Let me show you how to do that. For the purpose of our demonstration, I'm just gonna push some of this charcoal to the side to clear a spot. Notice I'm doing it right in the front of the egg, okay? Next thing we do, throw a couple of these here fire starters into the blazer ball. Place it right down in the bottom. You can start with it empty or just push some aside like that. So we're gonna light this and then we're gonna cover it so that the basic fire for smoking is at the bottom of the grill. We don't want it at the top, that's for grilling. Like I said, we're putting the blaze ball right in front of it where we want the air to get to, so it's gonna come right in here and hit that fire. And then once you've got a good fire burning like that, cover it up, okay? Now I'm also gonna pour some more charcoal in here because like I said, we want it to have a nice, solid, high base in here. Are we clear on how to set it up for smoking? Good, now let's set it up for grilling. This thing's the extra large, it's ginormous. So I'm gonna use four fire starters to show you how to get the most surface area going in the quickest amount of time, just like this. Kind of clear yourself out four little holes or whatever you wanna do, divots, whatever, whatever you wanna call it. So what's gonna happen is as we light it, it's gonna light all the charcoal so that we have the maximum grilling surface with fire underneath it. Now that it's lit, <coughs> temperature control. If you wanted to set your temperature to 250 degrees, would you use your bottom vent or your top vent? If the temperature gets out of control and suddenly jumps on you, is there a way to control that? Absolutely and absolutely and absolutely. Yes, on all three. 
All right, I'm gonna show you right now how I like to do it, and then I'm gonna show you how you can also do it. If I was gonna set this up for 250 degree cooking, once I got it to temperature, I'm gonna set my bottom vent just open, maybe about an eighth of an inch, maybe a touch more, okay? And my bottom vent, my top vent, I'm sorry, I'm gonna leave completely open, full airflow. That'll catch you at 250 degrees and it will leave it cooking solid that whole entire time. If you wanted to cook a little bit hotter, just open your bottom vent a little bit more and let it come to temperature. It's real simple. It's called controlling temperature with the bottom vent. Some of you may have a different type of top than this. This is called the, the regulator. Um, the old one is called the daisy wheel. And we have a lot of people have this one from Smokeware. You can do the same thing. You just leave the vent fully open, okay? Just like that. Or on the daisy wheel, I'm gonna show you on the egg how to set it up properly. It's a little bit involved. Now, a couple things with what's called the daisy wheel, which is the old style. If you put the words big green egg in the front, when you open up your grill, this thing is gonna slide and you're not gonna have any kind of control. So the proper way to do it is to set this up with the writing on the back, okay? Now when you open it up, it doesn't move. That's the first part. Second, if you want to, you can open this up like this and have full airflow. Or if you want just semi good airflow and not have it move, the little trick is line this tab up with the letter N on the word green in Big Green Egg and you'll have perfect airflow. The second way to control the temperature is using just the top vent. But in order to do that, we have to readjust our bottom vent. So let's head down there. By that bottom vent being halfway open, it allows the air to come in nicely. You may want to open it more, you may want to open it a little bit less. That's up to you. Find your personal preference. Using the regulator, if you wanted to have it at 250 degrees or so, you're going to keep that bottom vent about halfway and have just a slight opening here. You don't want a ton because you want to restrict the airflow so that it's not building a hotter fire. The fire lives off of air. The more airflow, the hotter it's going to burn. Let's say you're cooking chicken and you want about 350 degrees. That's going to be somewhere around there. So there's your chicken setting. You want pizza? Slide her open. 700, 800, 900 degrees, whatever you want. Control it here. Remember, just restrict the airflow for cooler temperatures, open the airflow for greater temperatures. Now that we have temperature control completely in order, hopefully, let me show you the differences of what we use the different temperatures for. One being direct grilling, one being indirect grilling. When you buy your big green egg, this is how it comes set up right directly from the store. It gives you your, your fire ring, and then your grate will sit right on top of that. For direct grilling, that's all there is to it. You use your spot, simple multi spots to light the fire, get that whole layer of charcoal lit on top, and you're grilling within about 15 minutes. Plain and simple. If you're a little bit uneasy having to reach down into the grill for grilling like that, this is what's called the expander system that you can get for the big green egg. There's a lot of accessories available for eggs, and this is one that I highly recommend. This allows you to raise the grate up higher so you're working at the same level as the egg, and you're gonna have a little bit easier control with cooking your food because it's not gonna be just so darn tight and close to the flames. You're gonna have a little bit of space in there, easier cooking management. And that is direct cooking, folks, which leads us into indirect cooking where you're cooking without flames directly below your food, almost sort of like an oven or a convection style cooking. It's really simple. For this, another reason I love the expander, just take out the grates, and we're gonna talk about this piece. This is not a steering wheel. It's called a convector. It's a deflector. It's a heat deflector. So basically, all it's gonna do is it sits right in here, like this. You're gonna put your grates right back on top, you can use the, the standard grate that comes with the egg, which is one piece, or you can use the two piece, which we're gonna cover in a different video. But now, you can smoke your meats indirect, no flames. You're gonna get full warmth all around it. It's gonna come around the edges and cook your meat almost like it's in an oven. I also wanna show you that you can use the convector without having to use the, um, the expander system. Now, all you do, if you look here, you'll see that there's three slots, grooves, in the firing. I believe newer eggs maybe don't even come with them in it, but you just lay this down here, put the three legs right in there, and you're gonna put your grate right on top of that. That's all finished. The last thing I'm gonna show you is how to clean out the big green egg a couple different ways. But first, we wanna make sure our fire is completely out. You do not want any burning ashes. If you wanna shut it down, simply close the top vent, close the bottom vent. 
Give it about 10, 15 minutes or so. Your coals should be completely out. Which brings us to our last and final step, cleaning out the big green egg. How do we do it? There's a number of different ways. It's real easy. First, we're gonna start with cleaning out the charcoal basket. Let's show you how that's done. First, make sure all of your coals are extinguished. They have to be completely out, not even a little tiny bit going. You want it to be absolutely out before you do it. The nice part about like having a big green egg basket like this or any other kind of basket is easy charcoal clean out. Now, there's still a lot of charcoal in here that's still good to use, right? We don't want to get rid of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a kitchen garbage bag. We're going to place this in there and just shake it out. See all these holes? That's what these holes are in the tops and the bottom for. Oh. Once it's in the bag, grab your two handles, pull your bag up kind of around it if you can, like so, and just start shaking. All the ash, all the garbage is all going to shake down into the bottom. Then you pull this back out and you've got reusable charcoal. Yay! Now, underneath that basket, you've got all of this ash that's built up down here, okay? And here it's almost an inch thick, so you want to keep this cleaned out. I recommend doing it about every three to four, maybe five uses at the most. But you want to keep this clean because otherwise it's going to restrict the airflow coming into the egg and it's not going to allow your fire to build properly. There are a number of different ways to clean that ash out of there. You can use an ash tool, which you can get from Big Green Egg or whatever. And I like to use a shop vac. Again, you want your coals to be out. Have I mentioned that yet? Let's start with the, shop, with the ash tool, show you how to do that first. Okay, first thing we do is we open up our bottom vent all the way, and you can see we have plenty of ash buildup in there. With the ash tool, it's really simple. You're simply just sticking it in and pulling that ash out. Just do it right into a dustpan, whatever you have. Even better for me is I like to use a shop vac. Very simple, it gets it nice and clean, nice and easy, gets everything out of there. For that, you can either go in through the front, as such, or right from the top. I like to go from the top, like this. And that's how you clean it out, right? Not so quick, we're not done yet. There's one more step that for a deep cleaning that you wanna do. We're gonna take the insides out of the egg. So we're gonna take the fire ring out. Now remember, these are ceramic. Handle them carefully, okay? They're fragile. And the last one is the actual fire bowl. Take this out as well. Okay, again, very carefully. Fragile. Now you can see that I cleaned this out recently so there's not a ton here, but you're gonna get some buildup of ash around the outside. Simply take your shop vac or whatever you want to use. You could even use a little, you know, push broom or something like that and just vacuum this out. And the last question we want to answer is why in the world does anybody need this many big green eggs? Well, let me tell you. You want to cook up one steak? Use the mini. You want to cook a couple lobster tails and a, and, a, and a steak? Use this. You want to cook up a whole lot of stuff? Use the XL. You want to? No. Nobody uses that one. I've never cooked in it. Here's why. The story is that back a number of years ago, Big Green Egg made about 200 limited edition blue ones. If you ever see one of those, reach out to me. I want to buy it, okay? Let me know. There are, you can't find them anywhere. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you got some great information out of it. We try to provide it so it's easy to use and make your, enjoyable, uh, make your experience enjoyable. So remember to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. We really work hard for it. Give us a thumbs up and leave us a comment below. Tell us a tip that you'd like to see or that maybe you have a secret about on your Big Green Egg or Kamado cooker. Until then, remember, get out and grill, keep them clean, and we'll see you next week on The Fogo Life.